Big win for Daddy Brad and the boys. 33-point victory, 85-52 over Bethune-Cookman. Uh, I think that's not anything to really write home about, but it was good to see this team dominate a lesser opponent, right? Yeah, no, it's good to see, especially around the Big Ten. You got teams losing to schools like Eastern Illinois and Central Michigan. So you got to you gotta take care of business. And it's good to see the Real Housewives of Champaign, you know, kind of right the ship and and, cha- and change the dramatics a little bit and get back to winning basketball. And I, I'm excited to talk about Illinois actual basketball, like on the court, instead of, you know, fart noises and your transfer who cut his mullet off you know, having a, having a master class at the podium. I didn't know you were going to the real housewives of champagne. That is, I think my favorite line from you that I've ever heard. That's so good. That's so good. Um, yeah. I mean, this was a, a total team effort. It appeared to me, I jumped over to it, uh, as the Michigan debacle was going down. If you want to see my full thoughts on the misery of that, we have another video on the channel for uh, my Michigan misery, but there were some changes, some some strategy stuff that Brad adjusted for this game, both lineup wise and then the way they played basketball that I think are pretty interesting and I want to talk about and I want to give him credit for, first of all. Uh, Dane Danger hit the starting lineup, 22 points, six rebounds, eight for 10 from the floor. He played 26 minutes. Uh, just solely talking about Dane, I want to take a mini victory lap because I said this three games into the season. I said it again last week. Uh, we we recorded we pre-recorded an episode for the Field of 68 where we did New Year's resolutions for a bunch of teams that have issues. I was assigned to Illinois, come up with a resolution for him. My resolution was start Dane Danger, play him more minutes. And I don't know how you look at what happened last night and what he's done this whole season and say that he shouldn't be a fixture in this lineup. Uh, my my thinking there, Cart, has been the positionless basketball thing on paper. It's fun to say, fine. But it only works if you got five guys who are playing well. Illinois doesn't have five guys that aren't Dane Danger that can switch and do everything and also be efficient basketball player. It's been killing them trying to do that. Uh, when you've got this guy, Dane Danger, who's shooting roughly 75% from the floor on the season. I mean, that's absurd. Has there ever been a center who shoots 75% from the floor for an entire yeah, two-month stretch? Like. Even he didn't get that high. Like I just, to me, if you're if you're shooting seventy five percent from the floor, averaging eleven points a game, in like sixteen minutes a game, you need more shots and you need more minutes. That's where I'm at with Dane. Like let's get that down to like sixty percent and average sixteen a game. I don't think it's that crazy. So I uh, I love to see that adjustment, and it was great that Dane played really well last night. Got to see him do it against a better opponent with bigger centers. But I think like you're gonna need that in the Big Ten at this point. The other guy who hit the starting lineup was Sincere Harris, who by all accounts has been awesome this year. He's turned heads with his effort. Uh, 12 points, four rebounds, three assists in Sincere Harris's first start last night, two for three from three. Again, that he's just another one of the dudes Illinois has. We've talked all along. The problem has never been that they have dudes. It's been about can they find the right combination to play well together. So between Danger and Harris finding the lineup, uh, what did you what did you like most about that change? I think I think mostly for me, just like surface level is just adjustments. Like you're ha- you have this stretch where all this stuff, like I joked about, is going on the drama. And yes, it is drama. I mean, I, I do want to comment on this, Greg, in the last couple of videos that we posted. And we do look at comments, by the way, because, you know, we're an intuitive podcast and we like to see what you guys say about videos and about us, you know, to better ourselves and or commented on in situations like this. A couple of videos ago, there was issues as far as, you know, you know, some locker room mumblings or just 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 dr- kind of dramatic type things. And we were told to brush it off. And it's just a thing. We just beat Texas. We'll be fine. Well, it wasn't fine. OK, you went to Missouri and you got blown out. And yeah, you got the win against Alabama AM, and But there were some struggles in the second half. I don't care also, what anyone says about that. Penn State blowout, too, was right in that mix. Like this was this Sorry, was an State. extended yeah. stretch of horrible play. Right. This wasn't a flash in the pan. It was a it was a pat. It was becoming a pattern at this point. But credit to Brad and credit to, you know, Illinois as a team. They had this is why. When people were asking me, are you still like with Illinois? Are you still around with Illinois? 
Yes, I am, because this team has talent and they have players that you can plug and play into the lineups and things like this. I think uh, just to quote Coleman, who we, we had on an episode a long time ago, he said that posi- positionless basketball will look good and also help when it came to March. It wouldn't necessarily help them or it might help them in the Big Ten, but it would really kind of show itself and help them in March. But if if you have a force like Dane Danger, like why not just like ride that out and see what it does? So I think it's a good change in the lineup. Um, the sophomore curse of Illinois basketball players, I think is alive and well with uh, RJ Melendez. I just don't think he's necessarily there yet for me. Uh, good player, but I don't think he's taking the jump that people thought he would take. But th- this Illinois team has talent and that you know underwood has the luxury of being able to make adjustments and even though this is against a lower level opponent i think you see other pieces and guys that this illinois team has and i think they'll you know they'll be okay yeah i think the important thing for illinois is realizing you don't have to definitively be something like just play what the matchup dictates play what oh oh being being something being something's overrated yeah, like you. play it's it this is the soccer turn, right? But like form. Play the play the players who are in good form as no, of No, you right? you use the word, G. Tactics? Use the word you love. I, I love I love Brad's tactics in this one. I really did. Uh no, but like it's to me it was dumb. Like it was just a buzzword and I hate when coaches do buzzwords, but like like I don't know. It it didn't need to be we are positionless now. You don't have to be positionless. If Dane Danger is one of your best players, you're not positionless. Just you've got a great center. That's a great thing too. We, and, we we want hey make positions great again. Make positions great again, man. Please. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And that's not going to be every game. Like there will be games that call for less Dane Danger, and I trust Brad will figure it out. But uh, at, for the time being, they needed to get him on the floor. He did a good job. They needed to get Harris more minutes, and he, I mean, he has done that now. It's impressive. The the hard part will always be back to your real housewives point. Uh, how do you keep everybody happy? Because when you don't have defined, these are our five guys, everybody wants to be in the five guys. And now you've got, I mean, let's just go down the list. You got the five guys that started last night with Danger and with Harris, who now are going to feel strongly they belong in the five. You've got Sky Clark, who was out with an injury in this game, who believes he's the starting point guard on this team. You've got Jay Naps, who certainly believes he's the best point guard on this team. You've got RJ Melendez, who was just benched for the first time this season, who who knows where his head is at right now. I, you've got Ty Rogers, who's been in and out of the lineup. I'm sure he doesn't think he deserves a starting spot right now, but it's just a lot of guys, man. It's a lot of guys. And like we kind of said after the Texas game, we were doing our body language reading, which turned out, uh, honestly, they should write about that in history books. The, the minute-long clip of you and I discovering there was something amiss here and Illinois fans be like, I've watched this, I see nothing, and then their team imploding for three weeks after due to strictly body language stuff. Like, come on, historians should study us. But uh, that's that's going to be the thing all year long is I don't think you can keep 10 guys happy on this team. Even if Brad does the best possible job he can do, someone's going to end up unhappy. And... uh. I don't know. You probably got to be strategic in who you choose is the unhappy guy. And it seems like at least last night, the pivot has been like, okay, less Melendez, which I I think might be fine for this team right now. He's not doing a lot on both ends and he's not making shots. Uh, And the other one obviously is sky with the injury. When sky comes back healthy, what do you do? Cause I, I, I mean, I love Sky Clark. I think he's a very good player. I think he's still far from what his ceiling will be in college and beyond. Um, but like he he's not a guy who's gonna be happy coming off the bench. So Yeah. I, I don't know. Exactly. I but, don't know what uh, here, here's a, here's the one good thing though. There's not a college basketball team in the history that has won championships, not won championships, done things that has had one through fifteen every player be happy. Yeah. I disagree. That's not, no, it has never happened. I disagree. How so? I, disagree. I just disagree. I think there's absolutely championship mm-hmm. teams that have been all the way bought in, one through 15. Nope. nope, 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 nope. <laughs> not your teams. Well, 
No, <laughs> no, I'm, team, no, no I'm team you've been on has ever had 15 guys happy because you've never been happy. <laughs> Am I wrong on that? Minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This isn't about me. <laughs> oh, it seemed like it was coming for you there. It's, no, it's not. No, I'm there. There's no such thing as a, a basketball team with one through 15 guys are all happy. Oh, I totally disagree. There's always one. There's I wholeheartedly, one. wholeheartedly disagree with that. There's been Michigan State teams in the last 10 years that have had 10, 11, 15 guys happy. However many guys they got. They normally only have 10 because he leaves five scholarships open. But those they've been all happy. That's happened at Michigan State recently. That's happened at Michigan recently. Yeah, and we were seventh in the Big Ten last year. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I didn't mean last year's team was happy. I'm talking the teams like those a couple Cassius Winston teams. You tell me everyone wasn't happy. Kyle Aaron's was coming off the bench like I deserve more. Me, me, me. Like I don't okay, think that yeah. was happening. Okay, yeah, yeah. Those teams, yeah, those teams are pretty giddy. They were locked in, man. Like that's it's not a every team someone's pissed off thing. And even if it is, like. This Illinois team has more of that. That's why they're the housewives. It's just how do you manage that? And this, I think this game was a good first step, but it might have been made easier due to having a couple guys out from injury. And I don't know. It's tough. So, so, so what you're saying is the drama isn't over? The drama is far from over. Um, Illinois right now is still pretty low in the big 10 standings, like as low as you can be in the big 10 standings. I don't think we or anybody believes that that will remain the case long-term this season. Uh, do you think Illinois can still win this conference? They're two games behind yeah. Purdue and Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So you think you could see like a rampage coming to me. That's what they would need. They need to like go a whole month. I can, I can see, I can see both a rampage and also a lull from other teams in the big 10. Okay. If anyone hasn't noticed, Purdue Purdue can't shoot for shit. What do you think the number is, by the way? Like, do you think six losses could win this league? Yes. I do. Oh man, that's so ugly. Uh Ken you, Pop, you don't think, but I mean, don't don't you think so too? I, I think you're probably right. It just like it's pretty unprecedented. I think it it'd probably be like a four way tie of teams with six losses if that happens. Um Ken Palm projects Illinois to lose their next game at Northwestern, by the way. Does that mean that we're going to get Illinois plus money at Northwestern? <laughs> it might be. Uh, there's yeah, no the, way I, There's no way I pull off of that, even though I know they're trying to get me. I, there's no way I'm pulling <laughs> off of that. The Ken Palm projection is 10 and 10 for this team in conference, which would not win the conference. Um, also, I think we're an Evan Miyakawa pod. We're Evan Miyakawa podcast. Hey, Matthew Meyer, best transfer in the country. Um, so, also, we're going to Champaign soon. More details to come on that. We'd love to meet a bunch of people if possible, but apparently we're going while the students are on break. Except, I don't think that's true, is it? Aren't we going? We're going in like two more weeks. The students are back. Yeah. No, they should be back by then. Somebody messaged me and was like, you're really coming to Champaign when the students are on break? And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Didn't think about it. But we're going... Friday, January 13th. Are they really on break still? I don't think so. That's a crazy break if they're doing that. I mean, Albion, Albion College had a crazy break. Like if it if three, it's still like, break. Like three, like, three, like three months. If it's still break, it's at least like the Friday before classes resume, right? So like people should be coming back. Also, bring your asses back. We're going to be there. Yeah, get there a little I'm bit saying, early. Dog, get, get, get yourself situated and ready for the week next week when classes start back up. Make it happen. Yeah, come on. That's brutal. Uh, all right. Well, Illinois, congrats on a big win. Hopefully, the winning ways continue. We certainly would love that. We like talking oh, about Well, hold on, though, Greg. We're going to end this. We're going to end this the way we end every Illinois episode. Who's winning the Big Ten? <laughs> we do end that every time with this. We, every Illinois. time. Who's winning? Not Illinois. Not Illinois. I don't know who's winning this league, man. This league stinks. Do I need to give an answer? Yes. Can you go first and I can look at numbers? Oh, man, this is so bad. I mean, the safe answer is Illinois, Purdue. Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. That's your answer of who's winning the Big Ten? Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're last in the conference right now. 
Oh man. Okay. I would love that. I would love that. I uh, I think it's going to be a four-way tie. I know that's a cop out, but am I allowed to say that? I genuinely think it's a four-way tie. Teams with six losses get there. That'd be typical. I think it's it ends up being Purdue, Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Penn State all tie with six losses. And Micah Shrewsbury hangs a banner. As he should. As does, honestly, <laughs> I'm going to make an Illinois joke, but they're not one of the four teams. But they'd have a lot of banner stuff if they <laughs> if they tied for the Big Ten with four other schools. Uh, all right, congrats, oh, Illinois. Big win. Good job.